ye land lovers. Welcome back to the History of Diving Museum. My name is Emily and I am the Community Outreach Coordinator. Today we are inside the Arcturus. The Arcturus was a vessel that the gentleman William Beebe was sailing on for the New York Zoological Society in the mid-1920s. At the time, he was an ornithologist, which meant he studied birds. But in addition to studying birds, he also brought along a Miller Dunn Diven Hood II, which is in the crate behind me right here. And here is a photo of Mr. Beebe wearing said helmet. Now, he ended up going and exploring under the sea and actually got interested in what fish and other sea creatures were doing in their natural habitats. Prior to his interest in this, nobody had really spent quality time studying these creatures. This fascination would lead him to becoming the father of modern marine biology, as he's frequently considered today. But it also made him want to go to greater depths. So, about a decade later, he teamed up with a gentleman named Otis Bardum to develop and create the bathysphere. Now, the bathysphere is a four foot wide iron ball with a few windows on it that they were able to climb into and that they then were lowered down into the abyss to see what creatures lurked there. Now, this image to my right, whoa, 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 steady as we go, Captain, it's a little rocky here. This image to the right is a depiction of Bibi looking out of a porthole window into the abyss of the terrifying creatures. Interesting enough though, this is not an accurate depiction of the bathysphere. In the next couple days, I'll be sharing some posts about what the bathysphere actually looks like and how it worked. Now, while they were down there in the abyss, which was the first time anyone had done so, they had air being supplied down to them, and they had a telephone line that went up to the top so they could communicate with the surface. And that communication was then broadcasted on live radio so people all around the country could actually hear what they were seeing. It was pretty cool stuff. Not only was William Beebe an adventurer, but he also was a mentor. He trained and helped new and upcoming marine biologists in the field, such as Rachel Carson, who ended up writing Silent Spring later on. Pretty neat stuff we've got here at the Diving Museum. But I'm being summoned above deck, so I will see you guys. Stay safe out there, wash your hands, and have fun learning. See you next time.